Okay, so we're gonna get started. Ashley, hey, what are you doing? Get off your phone. What are you doing? Why are you on your phone? Sorry. <laughs> That's what we're gonna talk about today. Everyone is constantly on their phone. And it's one is distracting, two, we're not able to focus on what we want in our life. And three, most importantly, it's taking us away from really enjoying life the way that we should. So let's get started today. We're going to talk about unplugging from your phone. We think that we're tuning in, but we're actually tuning out when we actually go on our phone. And in order to do that, and when you do that, you're going to notice you're gaining a lot of freedom in your health and your life and everything so that you're not restricted to your phone and what is happening in the world and social media and all that. And you get to literally throw it away, just like I told Ashley, get rid of the phone. <laughs> And then stay focused on what you want to create in your life because you get to do that. But if you let your phone and social media and all of emails, all of that happen and control you, there's no way you're going to be able to do that and increase the chance of anxiety, all these mental health disorders, as I see a lot in my office. And I'm sure uh, Ashley's going to talk more what she sees with her clients too. So common habits, people don't even realize that they have. You go through a typical day, you wake up. You hear your alarm, maybe like five of them, because we always take forever to wake up, unfortunately. And then what do we do? We grab our phone so we can wake up. So we go on social media right away. And whatever's on social media, that's what's dictating our day. And we see all of our tasks for the day. We see emails. And we see all this stuff. And you haven't even gotten out of bed, and you're already in this frenzy state of stuff you have to do. You're late. You're, you got five minutes to brush your teeth. And then all of a sudden you got your coffee ready and then you're running to your car because you're already thinking about all the emails you have to respond to. And you spilled some coffee on yourself. So now you already started your day stressed and then you hit traffic. I think you get the point. This is what most people live, start their day like. And then they wonder why they're stressed. They wonder why they're not actually able to connect with their family. And then they come home and they're not, they're not able to. They're not able to be the best husband, wife, partner, whatever it may be, and then also an employee, whatever they want to do. In life. And it all can start with you getting off your phone and structuring your day to not let it control you. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So Ash, you talk too about like what, what your um, purpose is, especially with what we're going to talk about. Yes. So it seems so simple to just say like, just get off your phone, just put it down. But it really is like an addiction at this point for so many people. And I totally get it. I'm always battling with like building those healthy habits. And I even see the effect of them and how great they are. But then sometimes you get sucked back into your phone and then you just have to keep reminding yourself. It's, it's a constant kind of reminder and always something you're working on. But what my typical day used to look like and sometimes still slips back in but you know you hear that alarm go off I snooze like several times till I really have to get up I wake up feeling groggy I never feel like I slept well and got good quality sleep right away open up my phone go through the typical email Instagram Facebook feel like okay now I look through all my crap that I don't need to look through but it's just your habit and then, you know, you get up, quick rush out the door. I go to my first fitness class that I have to teach. And usually at least the first half of that class, I got to fake it because my energy is so low. Get back home, sit at my desk, answer all those emails. And then just by the end of the day, you realize, oh, I wanted to meditate today, but never really made it happen. I wanted to work out, but never got there. And then, you know, you end your day with sitting in front of the TV with your phone right next to you where it always is, or else you're like, Oh, where's my phone? And you know, if you have someone sitting next to you, but you're both on your phones, you probably go to sleep watching television on your phone. So it's just screen time, screen time, screen time, and you don't even realize. So today we're really going to talk about how you can limit that screen time, why you want to limit that screen time, and how really like disconnecting is going to help you reconnect with everyone around you. So going into morning routine. So like I just said, what a typical morning routine maybe used to be for me, maybe it sounds very familiar to you. How can we change up this morning routine with just tiny, tiny, tiny changes that will make a big difference? So something that helps me a lot is not allowing snoozing at all. Which sounds crazy, but it's really not great to keep snoozing. So something that helps with that is placing your phone on the other side of your room. 
set your alarm. So the only way to turn that alarm off is you got to get out of bed. Okay. Especially if your spouse is in bed with you and they're like, you got to get up and turn that off. So it forces you to get up and then you're up anyway. You're not going to get back in bed. No snoozing. I'll place a glass of water right next to my phone on the other side of the room. So right away you're drinking a glass of water to start the day, which is really, really good for you. And then you're up and hopefully feeling rested. We'll talk about the nighttime routine, which will help you feel rested. And then I love to do some stretches, either right from your bed um, or on your bedroom floor, or just before you start going to work, if you can, even just like three minutes of child's pose, um, down dog, some side body stretches, little back bend. Um, you'll surprise yourself at how good that feels to stretch in the morning. Um, and then just, if you do have extra time too, taking some time for your mental health and you can choose, you don't have to do everything, maybe a little meditation, um, a little breath work, taking a short walk outside, um, or just drinking your coffee outdoors. The power of being outside and seeing nature is huge as well. Um, but just really trying to take that morning to set your intention, not be on your phone right from the start. Um, so you can kind of not hit that to-do list too early. Just kind of see how you're feeling and check in. Um, so I know that Dr. Mike has been changing up his morning routine as well and has seen, seen some great results. So what's yours been looking like? Yeah, huge change. So um, for me, my I'm a chiropractor. I have a family. Um, I, I have, and also I run and operate my own office. So if you think about all these different roles that I play, and we all do, by the way, you know, you may not be a chiropractor, but you may have a different job and you may still have a family or you may have all these different things in your life. So it's the same concept. doesn't matter the details. But the thing is, is that you, well, I have a lot to do in my day. So I have a choice. I can either wake up and look at my emails and start right away by doing tasks. But what is that going to do? It's going to put you already in a stress mindset. So our brain and our way our body has been, been um, built is we're going to go back in our primal days. The reason why we have anxiety is for a reason. So why? If there's a little noise in the bush or something like that, you want to be anxious because that means that you can actually um, hear the predator. You can sniff out the predator better than other people that maybe aren't as anxious. So there is actual reason and physiological reason why we have stress and anxiety. The thing is, is we are artificially causing stress and anxiety, not the way that we're intended. How do we do that? By immediately going on their phone. One, you're getting artificial light into your face when you're not supposed to have that right away. That's gonna mess with a lot of physiology inside um, starting your day. And I'll just leave it there, but essentially it messes with hormones. It can mess with the neurophysiology physiology in your body. So now you're already starting the stress state. So instead of being relaxed, you can just imagine this happening. And you look at your emails and then you look at social media. And this is how you start your day. That's how most people do it. And they're already are frazzled because they're in a task-oriented mindset. And then they go to work. Are you actually going to be the best version of yourself that way? The answer is no. Are you going to be able to do it? Yes. But are you going to just go through the day and then, and then just hope that you're in control of it? And then you come back and, you know, oh, yeah, I'll enjoy the rest of the day. No, you're going to come back completed because you're already exhausting yourself because you're starting that anxiety mindset. You're thinking of predators at all the time. That's actually how your brain's interpreting it. So getting off of your phone, the easiest step, just get off of it. Don't start your morning with it. Wake up, do whatever you want. Walk your dogs, drink water, get 20, minimally 20 ounces of water, get your supplements, whatever you do. And maybe just sit there and do nothing. Maybe go in quiet, journal. Write your, um, what you want out of the day. Uh, if you looked at yourself from an outside um, a perspective, you know, what would you tell yourself of how you want to live your day? Who do you want to be there for? These are the questions you want to ask yourself. Write it down if you want. Say something good about yourself. We don't do that enough. Look in the mirror and say that. Do some stretches. Walk. Um, exercise. 
30 minutes to go outside. You do that, which I've been doing all these in different ways. And then you go on your phone. You're gonna notice a change, a huge change. You're gonna be happier. You're gonna be intentional in what you want. You're gonna be a better family. Man, you're gonna come home not as exhausted. You're gonna feel in control of your life the other way around. And it may not make sense until you do it. And it's not overnight. Try this at home. It takes time. It takes me a couple of months to really get into it. Where now I feel focused for the morning. So that's been my morning. And uh, it's been huge. But now what's next? How do you do it throughout the day, right? So we did our morning. Great. You, you, uh, you wrote your intention. You wrote your positive. You said something positive about yourself. You did something that you wanted in the day. And you envisioned what the day you want to be before you went on your phone and answered tasks and did all of that stuff. Now what? You know, we can, you started in a great way, but how do you do it throughout the day? One thing to do, put your phone on silent. You don't actually need to be answering your phone right away. Structure when you actually are able to answer your phone. So what does that mean? If you're working, let's say you're at work, I'm self-employed, so I have it, like, I, so I don't have a, like a boss per se or anything like that. But if you do and you go into the office, just put your phone on silent, put it away and structure your day the best you can outside of whatever has been uh, appointed to you through meetings. And just do 30 minutes at a timer, 30 minutes. When you're done with that 30 minutes, then give yourself permission to check emails for a couple of minutes. Then give yourself permission to go on social media for a little bit if you, if you really wanted to. Try that instead of it constantly buzzing. Because imagine it buzzing, it's a, that's like someone like hitting you. Every time you get a text, how are you supposed to get your work done? You're not going to. And then you're going to feel like you didn't do anything throughout the day. That's one way you can uh, do it throughout the day. That's what I do. So what I do specifically, I put it on silence. Um, I put it so I can't see it. I also put the screen down because that will actually trigger your brain to get in a stress mindset. You won't get any work done. And let's be honest, do you really want to be at work all day long? So if you don't, this would be a great way to actually get, uh, spend less time and doing more so that you can go home to your family, go home, maybe watch, watch your favorite team in the evening and actually enjoy it instead of feeling like drained all because you were just constantly letting the phone suck that energy from you. And then there's other things that Ashley really knows a lot about, limitations of um, apps and all of that. She's going to share more about of what she does. Yes. So I started limiting my screen time on specific apps, which I know how to do it on the iPhone. Um, so you can grab your phone right now, go to your settings, and then go to screen time. And then you'll see a bunch of different options there. Um, app limit is the one I started with, and you can pick which app you want to limit and you choose. I want to be on Facebook for 30 minutes a day and you can lump apps together. So you can say all social media apps on my Facebook, um, my Instagram, my Twitter, all of those together. I want to be an hour a day tops. And then it will tell you, um, you have five minutes left and then it will kick you out at your hour if needed. So don't be scared. It's not going to like lock you out for the day. If needed, you can add 15 minutes of time to the day, or you can just ignore the limit. But it's at least going to help you notice because the first time I did it, it was like 9 a.m. and it was like app limit. I'm like, oh my God, like it just makes you be so aware of how often you're picking up your phone, you're looking at social media, it's without even noticing, right? And then you're like, why am I on here? And you think it's like a mental break to be on your phone, but it's actually not. Yeah, both with that light that you're looking at, that blue light, and it's just you're seeing all these things and and you do you ever get off your phone and be like oh, I feel so good and like refreshed and positive like no yeah so another thing that's helped me throughout my day is time blocking it has been huge 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 so the night before is how I do it at least I'll time block my day for the next day I go through every single minute of my day and plan what I'm going to do um so obviously I'll put on my client sessions in there. So I'm a personal trainer, group fitness instructor. And then in between those times, I'll even go down to eat, shower, because you, you got to make time for those too. Um, and then specific things I have to do for work, answer emails. Um, then when that time comes, I'm doing that. And I'm not thinking about anything else. I'll place my phone on the other side of the room because right now it's time to just answer emails on my computer um, or to eat my lunch. So time blocking has been huge, huge, huge. Try it out. 
Um, then you time block your meditation in, you time block your workout in so you don't forget to do them. So when I come home from my first session, say it's 7.30 in the morning, and maybe I would just kind of dilly-dally around, look at my phone, go on the computer. Instead, I'm like, oh, wait, I time locked meditation for the next 15 minutes. I'm a rule follower, so I'm like, I got to do it. I wrote it down. So it's just going to help you make sure you make time for those important things. And at the end of the day, you feel so much more productive when you've been time locking. Or I'm like multitasker. So as I'm answering email, I then check my text or I think, oh, I had to do this. I am looking for a rug on Facebook Marketplace. And then I try to do like five things at the same time. So this will stop you from doing that. And in the end, you really do get more done. Um, and also what I've seen in training and teaching, um, I'll be teaching a yoga class and people will be looking at their wrists and I'm like, what are they doing? A day after watches people, I don't have one. At least take it off for your yoga class because you don't need it on you at all times. Um, so maybe work that into uh, your practice as well as detaching it from your wrist if you're going to work out or meditate. Um, yeah. That's a, that's a big one I've seen. So throughout the day, really trying to time block to manage your time. You don't realize I don't even have time for social media. I was just going to it just without even thinking. Um, and I'll even notice as I'm walking to my car after a session, what do I do? I'm on my phone. As I'm walking into a session, I'm on my phone. As I'm in line at the grocery store, I'm on my phone. Like you're just constantly on it and you don't realize. And when I force myself to put that down, you've got to make that choice then you're like, oh my God, I can like look around and say hi to someone. Like it's just, a, it's a huge difference. So we're on it all the time. So really try to make that conscious effort. It's going to take time. Like Dr. Mike said, it's going to take a month or so to really get used to it and to see and feel that difference. Um, but you won't be sorry for sure. So as we move into our evening, maybe after you made dinner, you ate with your family, and then most people I'd say go to sit on the couch and watch TV, which isn't bad. Um, maybe have a TV limit though. Maybe like we're gonna watch an hour of TV together. Maybe we're gonna watch TV without our phones so we're at least a little more connected. Um, but I would really encourage trying to limit that technology um, near the end of the day. I gave up TV for a whole month once and it was so awesome. You feel like you have so much more time, even if I wasn't even watching that much, but at night I was like taking a bath. I was reading, I was going on a walk. I was actually like hanging out with my fiance more. So things that you feel like you never have time for, like I would never have time to take a bath or read a book. You do have time for it if you disconnect a little from that technology. So maybe starting off not quitting TV, but no technology an hour before bed really helps you get more quality sleep. So taking out that blue light and then you'll have so many other things to do. Maybe you'll just go to bed earlier. That's a good one. Um, or maybe you will pick up a book or hang out with your kids a little bit more. Um, so I definitely encourage no technology at least an hour before bed. Yeah. What have you been working on, Dr. Mike? Yeah, similar. And really for me, um, I, I'm coming, I'm constantly getting emails too, whether it's, um, you know, I have a, a lot of different um, people that uh, I work with, whether business-wise, you know, maybe I'll get emails from my account, and I'll get emails from, because this is when everyone's like maybe off of work too. So sometimes I still get bombarded with emails when I'm done with work. So it's like, I'm never done. When you're on your phone at evening, that's exactly what it feels like. You don't feel done. And if you're constantly on it, you will literally go to bed like this. <laughs> this is what's going on inside. So true. <laughs> and I know, and it's, I hear it a lot from patients. No wonder why you can't go to sleep properly. One, you're talking about screen time. If you're on your phone or screen time and blue light, all of that, what it does is it triggers part of our brain to think that we're up. Our brain, our body's amazing. It actually knows, um, interprets light, and it has certain hormones um, that will be triggered, either um, going up and then other ones will go down, which is what you want. So the easy one is melatonin. You want that going up so that you're able to sleep and not artificially doing it. Your body actually produces its 
itself. Why do I say artificial? Because when people take, so people that are on their phones, because I don't have to add more. I think what you said is great with the evening. It's so true. I'm just going to add on. Most people don't do what you just said, and they're on their phone or screen. And then what's happening is those type, uh, those people, when you make a habit out of that, you're not going to produce melatonin appropriately. So what does that mean? You're not now triggering your body to go to sleep. So what does that mean? Is that you're not going to go to sleep. So what do most people do? They'll get artificial melatonin. Oh, it's fine. I'll just get you know, melatonin, gummies, or whatever maybe may be, whatever's out there. And they take that. Great in the short term. It gets you to sleep. It works because that's melatonin for. What does that do long term? It actually shuts off that melatonin process because your body thinks it doesn't need it anymore. And now you're constantly in a stress state. You're on your phone now, you're looking at screen time, you're looking at emails, and now you cannot shut that down. You're dependent on that melatonin. And like you say, it will take months. If that's someone, if that is you, it's going to take some time. So that means you're going to slowly have to wean off of that. You're going to slowly have to start getting rid of some of that screen time at, at the evening. Just get it all done before that hour you want to go to bed. And then just put your phone on silent and put it away. Because you really don't actually have to answer anything that night. You don't. Everyone can know you're sleeping. You don't actually have to answer. It's not that important. It's not. It's not. Uh, so you can actually put it away. And then what you'll notice is you'll get, you'll start getting tired. You'll start getting um, circadian rhythm, meaning that you want to go to sleep at the same time because your body will start triggering melatonin, which will get you tired. Go to sleep, go through your sleep cycles and then wake you up the way you're supposed to wake up for your stress hormone that's supposed to wake you up so that you do feel uh, refreshed when you wake up and you don't need to hit the snooze and I think, you, I think everyone's getting the point. This is a cyclic pattern. It all relates to each other. So then the next day you wake up and you do exactly what we said, starting over again. And then your day, you're in control of your day. And it, it's something that it's amazing. You'll be, you will be a better parent, you'll be a better spouse and you'll be better to yourself because maybe everyone needs to look in the mirror, be better for yourself. I like what you said with the bath, like, like just do it. Like just, you don't have to be on your phone. Why don't you just take a bath? and Shut off all noise and just tune into yourself. When's the last time you tuned into yourself? And if you don't know what that means, that means you haven't done it. <laughs> and I think it's hard for people and scary for people. Like I, in yoga, you have Shavasana at the end, which is supposed to be at least two minutes of you laying there silently, no distraction. And people have the hardest time. I've had people ask me to just not, can we just skip that part? I'm like, this is the most important part of class. But since we are so used to always having distraction and communication and something to do that we're very uncomfortable just sitting with ourselves. We don't even know sometimes how we're feeling because we're just, let's just distract ourselves with social media. So it's super important to do, even though it might be scary and it might be hard and things might come up that you don't like or want to bury, but that's where you got to start because it's super important. So do try to sit in silence with yourself at least a couple minutes a day to start and it will get more comfortable and, and it's just very, very important to do. So give it a try, even if you're, you're a little nervous about it. Yes. And you know what? If you're nervous about it, that's the reason why you have to do it. True. It, it, it is. And it's some, it's, it's hard, but it's true. And once you get over that, is there, uh, then you'll, you'll actually be free. You'll free yourself from any limitations you have in here. And then how you view yourself. Cause you'll actually, un, like you said, um, most people just go to their phone to tune out of themselves. If you actually, it's called being introspective and you actually go an outside and approach to yourself. Um, you'll learn some things and, you know, if you're not going to do it for yourself, do it for someone else that you love. Some people are motivated better that way. And then at least get that started. And then I'd encourage you to do something for yourself because that's really important. Now we said a lot, there's a lot. So I just want to make sure everyone knows that please like, do not get stressed by everything we said. The whole point of intention of this is to get two different people two different professions, um, male and female, totally different approaches. Our goal is that uh, you can take different things and maybe connect in a different way. So let's just go with some action steps that you could start now. And I would say, I was gonna say do three, maybe just do one. And then when you master that one, 
listen to this again, you'll know what part of that you need to hear again. And then do another one. When you master that one, do another one. It's kind of like that. Instead of like listening to this and being like, I'm gonna do it all. I'm actually gonna take home to it. I'm sure as you agree with that too. <laughs> um, so one action items that we talked about. So set a plan to go on your email social media. Go on your day, have a schedule, and actually plan to do it. And if it's not part of your plan, get off the phone. You're going to have to train yourself. Give your phone to your spouse or friend. So if you're hanging out, you don't trust yourself, great. Find someone that you do trust and give the phone, put it on silent, give it to them. So I, what I do is I give it to my wife. I, put her, I tell her to put it in her purse. It's on silent. She's not going to check my phone. Why would she check my phone? That helps me a lot. Um, ask yourself a question every time you're on social media, email, whatever it may be. Find yourself. In order to retrain your body and get out of this habit loop that is created, you have to interrupt the interrupt, sorry, this habit loop. So a habit loop is created by a trigger, then you do an action, and then you get something out of it. And if it's a pleasurable experience, that will get this habit loop going. Um, you know, you can think about with gambling, I'm using an extreme example of gambling. That's a good, that's actually an example of how they do that in casinos. That's why they get you going. That's why you never feel like it's enough and you keep putting that coin in. They know what they're doing. They're, they're getting you into a habit loop. So know that psychology and interrupt that first trigger. That first trigger is going to be an email that, ding, that the people have on their phones or that on, the, on the watch. So first, get rid of that. If you do have that trigger, catch yourself and ask yourself this question. Is it necessary to do right now? If the answer is no, then don't do it. That other question, why am I even on this right now? If you don't have a good answer, don't do it. Now, if it's a text message that's life or death or, or something like that, hey, is it necessary right now? The answer is yes. Then respond to that. Uh, when you wake up, do not open your phone. That's like the biggest thing I would say to someone. Do not open your phone. Keep it on silent. And that is it. If you just do that, I guarantee you'll sort of some, some changes. What are some action steps you would tell someone to do right now? So good point when you said, you know, what if maybe you have a life or death text message or you yeah. are waiting. I know my mom would never like, she leaves her phone on loud by her bed in case I call for an emergency, which is rare, of course, but parents may not feel comfortable throwing their phone across the room on silent. So totally understandable, right. but there are options. So when you go into your settings and go to screen time, besides the app limit, they also have a downtime section. So you can say between 8 p.m. and 6 a.m., I want that to be my downtime. You get to choose what apps are like shut off. Um, and you can choose who you want to be like notified if they text or call you. So you can specifically say, if my daughter texts or calls, I want that to pop up, but everything else I want to be off, right? So there are ways around it um, if you do need to be waiting for that call from someone. Um, so I would say right now, pick up that phone, go to your settings, go to um, that screen time and just play around and see how you can limit, especially those social media apps. Um, and then you'll see if you put an hour long limit on it and you're hitting it by 10 a.m., you're like, oh, maybe this is something that I should work on. So that would be my main, main action item for you. Mm -hmm. So you got tools. Everyone should have, feel like they have tools uh, to use. And um, it's, it's totally new. This is not something I did overnight. Uh, slow, slow process, you know, learning about how this affects and just learning from all different sources and slowly incorporating. And, and it's okay if you don't do it right away. It's okay if you don't do it every day. Like, don't be hard on yourself. It just, Start again the next day and try something new. And um, and you, I look forward, you know, anyone that's, I don't know what platform it's going to be on, but we're going to put this out to the to everyone. If it's on YouTube, wherever it might be, write a comment if you did actually do any of these and see how it was. I'd love, we'd love to hear this stuff because, you know, someone helped us. So now it's our way to get back. Uh, I mean, I got inspired to do this from Ashley, actually. So with her philosophy of unplugging, unplugging from the, from the world. And I really started to understand what that really meant when I started to unplug from, from the world. It, it's, it's true, it actually has a really kind of effect. So 
Uh, obviously, different people. Everyone listen. You know, me and you. We have um, anyone that's listening. They could either email or contact us. Um, my email. One, you can go on my website, optimalspineandbody.com. You should see some contact information. My office email is admin at optimalspineandbody.com. Why do I say that? Anyone could just email me anytime. I don't care what, where you are in the world. You don't have to be around here to come in the office if you have any questions at all. Is there any way? And then also social media. I was talking about getting off social media. I am on social media, but I plan my time on it. <laughs> and I try to promote positive things like this. You could follow me through there. And then don't respond to me right away, though, because then that means I know that you are planning your day of social media. There you go. Uh, so you can follow me just by searching there. Optimal Spine and Body. Send a message if, if that's a preferred uh, mode of contact. And then what about you, Ashley, if someone wants to reach out to you? Yes. So my website is peakzenoutdoors.com. So you can get all the info on there. Contact us through the website. Uh, my email directly is Ashley. A-S-H-L-E-Y at peakzenoutdoors.com. Feel free to email me anytime. And then I'm on Instagram and Facebook as peakzen. So definitely come follow us. Um, we hope to share some good unplugging, get outdoors, be active. Um, I like to share a lot of good like hikes um, and different ways to get you all outside around the area. Um, so definitely check that out. But as Dr. Mike said, on your specific social media time of the day. <laughs> we do try to follow what we do because you know how it's both of us. We there's a reason why we talk about this because we um, we've done both ways. <laughs> I know I have. I've done the way where I'm constantly on and plugged in and I literally went through the whole day didn't come to anything. And then I'm doing work that I'm catching up to do. My wife's calling me saying, why, when are you coming home? You know, it's it just, it's, it's, I don't like that. I'd rather choose a different way. And it's hard, but you have to choose different if you want freedom in your health. If you want to follow status quo, this workshop is probably not the best for you and you can continue doing your way, but we don't want to follow that. So that's, that's my lasting words. You can be in control. Do this as one step for that to decrease stress and anxiety in your life and increase control, focus, and um, intention and purpose in your life. What's your lasting words if you had any? Oh, man. I'd say just try it out if you're skeptical and you're like, social media makes me really happy and maybe yeah. part of it does. That's awesome. But just try out some of these techniques. And again, just pick one because... I have clients all the time that they have huge goals and you gotta be like, okay, where do we wanna start? If your goal is too big or too many goals, it's gonna just stress you out and you'll quit. So start with something small, give it a try and see how you feel, let us know. Um, and we'd love to hear other techniques that y'all try out too. Um, but I would say just give it a try um, and see, see how it affects you, see how you feel. Yes, that you can be free and then just throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> all right well i hope this inspires some people to change and uh i hope everyone has a great day after listening to this agreed get off that phone get off the phone <laughs> <laughs> see you guys bye